Okay, so I've got a question here. How many digits is in 100 factorial and 823 factorial? Now, before we get into it, we know that these are going to be really big numbers. Probably in the uh, case of 823 factorial, probably not even going to fit it on this board. If you write it in sort of credible writing, it's going to be that big. So how are we going to go about finding the number of digits in this? Well, for example, if we take any number, let's say, for example, let's pick uh, 328. 328. We can see that this has got three digits just by looking at it. Now, there is a function called log base 10. So if we do log base 10 of 328, Let's just type that into the calculator and see what we get. That gives us 2.51 and some other digits. So we'll just put 2.51. Now we can see there's a kind of link there for that one. We want three, but we've only got two here. But what log base 10 is, is tells us how many digits we are away from the unit, so that's 1, 2. So that's 2.51, 328 is just a little bit more than 100. So it's going to be between, between 2, it's less than 1,000, so it's going to be less than 3. So let's try another number. So log of 2,555. So log base 10, 2,555. That one equals 3.40, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so we can see that this function here is going to be quite a good function for us to use. So in every case of this, it looks like if we take the integer part of the log base 10 and then add 1, that's going to give us our solution. So if we take the floor, use the floor function, and then add 1, then that would give us 3. In this case, it would give us 4. So that would be the correct answer for us to use. So let's strike up a little formula now. Log base 10 of x plus 1. And then we want to put the floor around that. That will give us our number of digits. I'm just going to write it like that for now. Right, so now we want a factorial, two factorial numbers. So we can just increase this a little bit and what we can say is the floor of log base 10 of x factorial plus 1 will give us the digits of the factorial number in there. So that's something we can work with now. So as we know that x factorial is 1 times 2 times 3 times da 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 times x minus 1 times x. That's going to give us our x factorial. As we want log base 10 of x factorial, we could then put this into the log base 10. So we can now say log base 10 of 1 times 2 times 3 da 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 times x minus 1 times x this will also be the same as this and then if we do the floor around that and add one that will give us our digits now luckily here we've got something we can do here with the log property so if this is log base 10 so what i'm going to do now for instead of keep writing log base 10 i'm just going to write log so when i say log i mean base 10 so by the log property here, what we can now say is that log of 1 plus log of 2 plus log of 3 plus log of x minus 1 plus log of x, floor that and add 1. That will also give us the digits for our x factorial. So... That's a formula we can use now. Now one way you could do with some crazy large numbers, like as in this case, you could use Python. So type some sort of formula in here using Python and that would give you the answer. Now if you check in the description below, 
I'm going to put some coding for you for Python and some other languages so you can use this formula and you can check our answer to this when we get to it a little bit later. Right, okay, so this is where we've got to now. So log base one, log base uh, log two, log three, or not log base one, log of one, log of two, all base 10, log of three. Now we can draw these up on a little graph. So we could end up with some sort of Ryman sums of all these numbers along here. And this is our bottom of the graph. And this will be here our solution to the log of any particular number. And we'd have, for example, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, da, 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 and so on. And we could go all the way along up to our x. And here we'd have the number of uh, the solution to the log question for these numbers. Right, so this here, looking like a Riemann sum, we can actually make this into an integral. So this at the moment looks like this. So that is for uh, n equals one. So let's, let's stick with the x. So x equals one to n of log of x that would give us our Riemann sum for all of these numbers all the way up to x. Now, we know we can turn that into an integral. So if we had our line going along here, the area under the graph would be the same as the total of the Riemann sums. So we can transfer this into an integral, which would then go from one to n log of x, dx. Now I'm going to put the log base 10 symbol back in here because this is going to be important to us when we come to integrate this. Now we don't know straight off a formula for log base 10 of x to integrate. So what we can do now we just change log base 10 into using the natural log. So log base 10 of x, let's just write that on here, so log base 10 of x is equivalent to natural log, so I'm going to put ln for natural log so we can distinguish between the normal log numbers. So ln of x divided by ln of 10. Now ln of 10 is never going to change whatever number we use. This is basically a constant multiple. So this integral now, we can just write this as n and 1, that's our range of integration natural log of x divided by natural log of 10 dx. And then the natural log of 10 we can bring out, so that's just a constant multiple, so 1 of ln of 10 and ln of x dx. And again our ranges are from 1 to n. Now natural log of x, we know how to integrate that straight off. There's a standard formula for that. If you check on the link in the description below, I've got uh, how you can integrate that using integration by parts. Well, I'm just going to write it straight up in here for us now, just to save time. 1 over ln 10, and then it's x ln x minus x. Sorry, that's our integral, so that's our answer, is x ln x minus x. And then from 1 to n, we calculate the solution. Now this will give us a good approximation as we can see from this there's all little bits here which are not accounted for and we need to really try and account for those if we can so we need to put some sort of an error term in there to try and make up the difference because at the moment this is only going to be an approximation of what these sums are. So I've got a little formula which I'm going to put forward and I'm going to leave it for you guys to test it out later uh, and then you can tell me which numbers it works for and which numbers it doesn't work for, whichever you prefer. So the error term for this, what I've got, what I'm proposing here is log, I'm going to add on a number, log base 10 of n divided by 10. So, for example, in the 100 um, case, so here we're going to go from one for 100. So, for 100 factorial, 
what I'm saying is the number of digits is going to be 1 over ln of 10. So that's our multiple, we're going to multiply everything by. And then we've got x ln x minus x going from 1. Then 100 is our n, that's the number we're looking to integrate. And log base 10 of 100 divided by 10. Well, just do it up here. Log base 10 of 100 divided by 10. Well, this is going to give us 2. And then divide that by 10, so that's going to give us 0.2. So now what we're going to write here is 100.2. Okay, so now in the case of the 823, so log base 10 of 823 divided by 10. Now I'm not going to be able to do that one in my head, so I'm going to need the calculator for that one. Log of 823 divided by 10, that's going to give us 0 0.29154 approximately. So I'm just going to put that as 0 0.2915. I think that'll be close enough. If you if we get a little bit of an erroneous answer when we come to do the integral, then we can maybe include some more digits to make it a little bit more accurate. So let me just enclose this. So now 823 factorial, I'm proposing is 1 over ln 10, x ln x minus x. So 823 plus this, so that's 823 point two nine one five to one now i suggest we're going to use a calculator when we're going to use these obviously with the log function we're definitely going to need it we're going to plug all these into the calculator and it's going to give us a, a, an answer for what we think it is so we're saying so this first one that's going to give me uh, 157.405 so I'm going to leave you guys to check all these things, see if I've made a mistake or not. And don't forget we need to add 1. So plus 1, so then that will give us 158. Let's put that 1 up there. That will give us 158. So I'm proposing 158 digits in 100 factorial. Now 823 factorial, so again using our floor function here. So if we plug that in into our calculator, we get 2043.229, add one to that. So then the floor of this is 2043 plus one is 2044. So I'm proposing using this formula, 823 factorial, 2044 digits. And 100 factorial, 158 digits. Okay. Now, what I want you guys to have a look for is tell me which numbers this is not going to work for. And there'll be some quite large numbers where my formula here, where did I write that? Here, this is my error term, uh, log base 10 of n divided by 10, will probably not work for some really large numbers, maybe 2000, maybe 3000. And one other number this is not gonna work for is for five factorial, funny enough. So five factorial, I'm gonna write that. Let's just put, put that here. So five factorial, obviously that's 120, so three digits. So 5 factorial, let's just work this out using the original formula. So for 5 factorial, so we've got log of 1 plus log of 2 plus log of 3 plus log of 4 plus log of 5. That gives me 2.079 using this one, which when doing the floor of that, that's going to give me 3. So that's 2.079 da 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 plus one equals three but when I do that using the formula here which is this formula 
this is the formula I'm proposing is the one to use, it doesn't seem to give us the correct answer. Now I've checked some of the other numbers like 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. This all works all the way good, probably even all the way up to 100. I've not checked them all, but I'm going to leave that for you guys to check. Anyway, this is my proposal for how to estimate the number of digits in a very large factorial number.